Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. The Game of the Year edition was released today and I'm gonna take a look at how it shapes up. Well, I'm gonna take a look at the Super Hornet. Uh, the rest of the Game of the Year edition, there's four other planes, there's a whole bunch of photogrammetry cities, some new airports, that I'll save for later. I'm just gonna assess the Super Hornet, which is the marquee item and the main thing I'm interested in. I've already tried flying it around a little bit, I can tell you that when you top off the fuel, it does not have external tanks, unfortunately. Deliveries are a little bit lackluster right now. We're going to have to rely on the community to give us anything like the old Blue Angels livery, or the, I especially want the NASA livery uh, that we had in FSX with the Acceleration Edition. Uh, so, yeah, but this is all we get right now. But it was free. Uh, so to be clear, uh, on the same day, we have two different things happening. We've got the Game of the Year edition with five planes and a whole bunch of airports, Sim Update 7, and uh, the programmetry cities. And then off to the side, we have in the marketplace, the Reno Air Race thing, which there's a $20 base package and then a $60 full package. And then a whole bunch of piecemeal mini packages that are really confusing and... No, not confusing to me, but they're confusing the marketplace physically because they're sort of filling up the marketplace. I don't even want to go there right now. It's just they're all taking up a whole lot of room. So it is sort of a mess. And the marketplace was never particularly well organized in the first place. So, yeah. Anyway, that is the Reno Air Race thing. I have not bought that yet. I haven't decided which version I want. Uh, I'll think about that. But first, let me enjoy this plane, hopefully. And I decided that I would fly it around Tokyo because it's fairly busy and it is, you know, scenery intensive. So we'll see how things perform. Keep in mind, though, I am recording at the same time. So Flight Sim is limited in its uh, CPU capacity that it can use. And also, I'm not going to be using the DirectX 12 option. They have added a base implementation of DirectX 12. It is a beta thing, and so I'm going to lay off of that until they are sure of that. After all, this update, as usual, introduced a few little glitches here and there. Uh, when you do update, it is a 33 gigabyte update, and you may notice that you can't rotate the globe. I wasn't able to rotate the globe, and it turns out you have to go into controls, and actually let me do that for you. Uh, so, options, controls, and set the mouse to default, and that will fix it. It reverses, I think I want the Y axis not reversed. And that's, that's the main thing. Now, if I do that, can I rotate the map still? I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so that's one thing you need to do, set that to default first. Another thing you will need to do is check out Afterburner. Otherwise, you will not be able to toggle the afterburner because pushing your throttle to 100% is not going to engage the afterburner. You're going to need to activate that key and only activate that key when your throttle is beyond 80%. And if you drop your throttle below 80%, it will deactivate the afterburner. And then if you try to push it to 100% again, you'll have to push this key again. So that's how the afterburner works. Apparently, that's, that's based on testing. So, okay, all that being said, let's take the F-18 out to Haneda International and see how it works. I'm deliberately not flying at Miramar or uh, I think there's another uh, reasonable airport to fly it out of because everybody's going to be there. There's going to be like 100 F-18s there, so I, I picked a place that isn't going to have too many F-18s. As far as the map thing is concerned, they'll, they'll probably release a hotfix. I'm sure there's going to be a hotfix for a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, and they uh, apparently did improvements to the weather system, but I'll save that for some other time. So this is what the cockpit looks like, and it looks pretty good. I mean, it looks good enough to be payware. Obviously, I do have the DCS World F-18. You don't have to tell me about that. That will have other functionality, but you can't fly around the world in it. And you have to pay for every tiny little chunk of the world separately. So, yeah, this does have benefits and it does look good. I mean, it's a payware quality sort of thing, even though we're getting it for free. 
Uh, the right display is not going to have all the weapon stuff because we can't do weapon stuff in here. But it does have uh, decent range information and fuel information, so that's good. And the HUD looks fine. Outside... Whoop. Outside it's looking like this. Oh, the axes are still a little bit reversed. Gosh darn it. So this is what we look like and I hope for other liveries, but it's dusty, it's got some marks, it's got rivets, it's all good. Alright, back inside, just uh, hearing it a little bit, uh, releasing the brakes. Now the flaps are going to be automated, full throttle will not engage the afterburners right now. So you can see my RPM down there. And the fuel flow 123. And we can definitely take off like that. Gear up, sound. I can't hear a darn thing as far as that goes, but I guess maybe the engines are strong. Let me throw all back here. Now we're at Tokyo for a reason. It's gonna have some trouble if we're going fast, but I'm gonna give it a chance to load the photogrammetry at a lower speed first, so let me slow down here. I'll give it at least a fair, a fighting shot, if you will. Before I go fast. Air brakes. We have air brakes. I like the F-18C version better. But, you know, you can't have everything. I've already flown it around here without recording, so I can tell you that it does work better like that. Well, definitely not a sightseeing sort of plane right now. We're not going that fast after all. And the scenery is having trouble keeping up here. Okay, let's go full throttle here. So going inside full throttle, we are at 123 on the fuel flow. And we'll see how fast we can go. Okay, we're at Mach 0.91 here. And it doesn't seem to be going any faster as long as we keep the afterburners off. So I've given it some time to try and load stuff. The autogen stuff loads very well, of course. We will see. It's a little bit choppy. I'm, go I'm going a little bit faster because of the dive here. Mach 0.95. But yeah, the photogrammetry just has a heck of a time. So now we're going to climb. And see if it's sort of a touring plane. And zooming out, I'm going to activate the afterburners. You can hear the afterburner. The flame effect is very subtle compared to what I'm used to. You can see it there. It's not bad. And as far as fuel consumption is concerned, we're at a nearly 300 on the fuel flow going down because we're climbing, which it should. Uh, some of the airplanes uh, don't do that properly. So up here at 30,000 feet, having the afterburner on is equivalent to uh, going with full throttle on the ground. Though it's uh, climbing a bit now. I mean the fuel flow is going up a bit. My HUD is sort of misaligned. I, I feel like I'm seated directly, looking directly at it, but it is not aligned with my head anymore. Don't know what to do about that. Um, hmm. Maybe if I go outside and come back in? Nope, it's gotten worse. Actually, uh, it might be that going outside is what makes it worse. Huh. Well, we can have the HUD on this side here, on the right side. If needs be. And I wanted to see the Mach number, you see. Our fuel flow is going up right now. 
we're at Mach 1 there. No funny effects as there should not be from inside the plane. As far as drag in the transonic region, I really didn't feel it. So I'm gonna level out and try and accelerate here. 40,000 feet. Taking a look outside. There is a difference. Ah, there, there, there is a mock effect here. So there, there's your sonic boom right there. And then we can hear the plane, the engines back here. But here is sort of a compression thing going. So that's actually very good. I like that. In a way that might even be better than DCS has it. Uh, we're at Mach 1.5 almost. But it's sure struggling, as it probably should. Something just had a, had a cow. I think we went over temp. Oh yeah, the fuel flow has died out. Okay. Um, let me... I'm dis I've disengaged the... Afterburner. Indeed. We seem to have limits to our uh, supersonic abilities here. Which is very interesting. That RPM is just uh, flailing. Okay. Uh, did we... We're not that high. So we didn't stall out like that. But I'm gonna dive here. Temp is 9999, so that's not good. Okay, well, we should probably find an airport, shouldn't we? I do like it when planes break. It is what simulating is all about, really. Oh, I think it suddenly engaged the engines again. It suddenly went faster, it seemed to me, too. Um, uh, do you suppose, was it like icing or something? I don't know. Something sure happened. The temp is now reading nominal numbers and not 9999. Maybe it was some sort of icing condition. Well, let's try and make it back to Yokohama or Tokyo or something. Oh, we could go RJ and S. Sure, why not? Maybe that's better. They're about equidistant. Let's make a trip of it. Oh, can we see Mount Fuji? Yeah, we can see Mount Fuji there. Okay, I think the engine is operating normally now, and the fuel flow is just based on our height right now. Let me see if I can activate the afterburner. I can. Well, let's see if we can bust it again. I might as well drain some of the fuel anyway with the afterburner since we're going to be landing. The HUD is annoying though. I don't know how to recenter the HUD right now. There might be a key for that. So now the question is what are some of the other supersonic planes are gonna, and afterburner equipped planes are going to be improved in this new version? Also, there's an F-104 that's due to come out from Sim Skunk Works that I'm looking forward to. Though, suddenly there are a lot of things to buy for Flight Sim, aren't there? But pressing the afterburner button doesn't actually disengage the afterburner. The only way to disengage the afterburner is by throttling down. Enough. And then it'll limit it to 80%. So now I'm full throttle on my quadrant. And then I press the afterburner button. 
Press the afterburner button again, then it's still at 100%. Throttle down to 70-ish, and then throttle up, and then it'll disengage it. It's uh, not the way I'm used to, but as long as I know what to do, it's fine. It is a flyby wire plane, and it feels like one too. But then again, a lot of planes in flights in 2020 feel like flyby wire planes anyway. But yeah, it, it acts like one. That's a nice view, though. Definitely better higher up than trying to take a close look at Tokyo with this. Trying to do the close in flying, I don't think is going to work out. At least in the really serious programmetry cities. So yeah, it basically does what I want it to do. And in fact, in some ways is more realistic than I was expecting. Just need to get some liveries for it. That's our runway right there. And yeah, in the non-photogrammetry areas, it'll be fine. Like here, it's doing a fine job. Looks spiffy and everything. That HUD, though, that that is a problem. <laughs> Well, it might be a problem that's already been solved and I just don't know the key to reset it, but... It's got the little E-bracket, too. Why are there trees right here? That's not a good place for trees. That's probably because of my tree pack, though. Might not be there by default. Okay, very light touchdown. Brakes not as vigorous as I had them before, but okay. Alright, we have landed. All things are nominal. So, should be interesting. I'm gonna have to test out what its maximum range is on the afterburner. Exactly how long can we go? at high mock, well not high mock, I mean, th th unfortunately the F-18 only goes 1.8 at most. Oh, there's a little red area there, okay, uh, I think I'll occupy it anyway, darn it. I think it's red just for me, so, there we have it. With that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.